How many times have you been in a trade or plan says to let it run to 3R, it's running 1.5R and somehow you make up this crazy assumption in your head that you've noticed something to the left and before you know it, you've decided to close that trade for 1.5R only to see it then run to 3R, hit your TP and then what you do is you're feeling in an emotional state, uh, you're emotionally heightened and you begin to do stupid things. You sabotage by taking another trade, looking for another opportunity, the next trade you over risk, you take a trade off plan, you hesitate with the next trade, you let the next trade run past 3R to 5R or 6R without any kind of comprehensive understanding of should it even get there. What you do is you kind of stay in this loop because you're constantly sabotaging due to the decision that you made early on in the day or the week or the month. Self-sabotage and overtrading is something that I definitely experienced in my journey and I do believe every trader will experience at some point. However, if you don't get control of it, it can lead to basically you not being consistent, not being profitable and banging your head off a wall or a door or a table or whatever you wanna bang your head off because you keep doing and repeating the same mistakes. Now the important thing to realize is it's completely normal and it happens and a lot of it is because the mindset we bring to trading is completely wrong, it is you need to not be in denial and you need to almost deal with the humility of maybe this is me, maybe I am, I am this person and maybe I'm experiencing this and whether you wanna admit it or not, until you actually admit it and get clear that this is you, you will not get anywhere. If you keep hiding behind it and blaming it on the strategy or the mentor or the coaching or the market or the internet connection or the kids or your missus or your husband or your dog or whatever it is, you're never fully gonna actually get anywhere because you're just passing the blame and it's so much easier as a human to pass the blame than it is to take control for our actions, right? Which is why we don't like admitting these things and a lot of us have and carry pride. And again, your ego is in the way and ego is the enemy and it will try to protect you and it will prevent you from perhaps feeling that humility and wanting to accept that maybe you are at fault and you just need to deal with that and go on a journey of going, okay, do my results reflect what a consistent trader looks like or I believe a consistent trader should be? And all that is, is are you profitable every month? It doesn't mean should you be making 30% a month, 40% a month, 50% a month. Again, these are images that are being fed to you through social media, through other people's highlight reels. So it's very important that isn't your definition of a consistent trader. And if it is, you need to fix that because that isn't essentially consistent trading. People can do it. You don't need that to be consistent. You could be making two, three, four percent a month. Now, yes, you may not pass prop firms, but then you can work on that. The first thing everyone should be doing is can you finish a month in profit? Because what most people tend to do is they come into trading and they just end up in drawdown and blow up accounts. Self-sabotage refers to the behavior patterns that prevent you from reaching your goals. They stop you from fulfilling your full potential and they can manifest in many different ways. For example, over-trading, impulsive trading, not having a stop loss, holding trades longer than you should, not following your plan, impulsively wanting to get into the market because you deem day trader or forex trader as someone that trades every day. Again, see how this is connected to the image that you have of what a trader is? Because if you think a trader or a day trader is someone that trades every day, you will naturally look to trade every day. Otherwise, you'll feel guilty that you're not doing your job. So you have to change the perspective and the image of what is a trader. Because if you think it's someone that trades every day and makes loads of art, if you're not doing that, you naturally will sabotage because you think you are not being what you deem to be a trader. Self-sabotage can also create a very vicious cycle of negative emotions, which if not controlled, you will experience all kinds of chaos in your trades. How often has it been that you've got, you've got a trading plan, you've got your system, you forecast for the day, and you're like, right, I'm waiting for this setup, only to find in the next hour you've jumped into a trade that doesn't meet any criteria, but you've told yourself you think it's a good idea. You have no self-awareness and you have no control over your emotions. And emotional control is so important because you can never fix your emotions. I think sometimes we're led to believe, like, get rid of emotions, I'm not emotional. That's not the case. You'll never fully get rid of them. They're biologically wired into us as humans. And you are always going to experience this no matter where you are in your journey, no matter what kind of capital you're trading. You will still get these kind of moments of self-sabotage that tries to kick in and tries to take control. The difference between a professional trader is they're able to be aware of the emotional triggers and causes and what happens, and they're able to stop it happening in its tracks before it takes control. Whereas a trader that's unaware will only notice after the fact, and that's when you're usually stood there or sat there going, why did I take that trade that didn't make any sense? And it's because at the moment you were hijacked because you believed that that trade made sense or it looked good because you're perception of a trader is someone that just trades every day so if you don't get that fix and you don't trade then you're not a trader 
So you see how this is all portraying back to your image and what you believe and deem to be a successful trader. Because everybody may have a difference of opinion and I'd be really interested to hear in the comments, what is your version of a successful trader? So now that you know what self-sabotage is, now you have to learn to overcome that. The biggest thing to control is being self-aware. A couple of things to track, your breathing. So if your breathing changes, that could be the first sign that we're triggering an emotional response. And each trigger will lead to a stress response, which will then usually lead to an action for us to do in order to stop feeling that way. So that might be you're in a trade, for example, and it's messing around. It's not quite your TP, but it's running in profit. Your plan says hold it to 3R, but you decide that at 1.5R, it might reverse. You get this thing in your head, you start looking to the left, you decided to make up some scenario that this could happen. So you close that trade, you're, you're fine, that your breathing will have changed, your heart rate will have increased, you might have sweaty palms, sweaty armpits, sweaty feet, whatever you've got, wherever you're sweating from, you might have all of those things happening. The, what that will do is that will trigger the stress response to act, and act will be to click the button to close the trade, to remove the fear, because your brain is interpreting this moment as fear, and what your brain will do is it will kick into fight or flight, and it will go, well, if I just close this, I'll feel better. Therefore, I won't have a heart rate that's increased. I won't have um, breathing that's, you know, getting shallow or I won't have this kind of gut feeling of I'm, I'm wrong or of fear or adrenaline. So if I just click the button, I'm done. So under being self-aware enough to realize that's happening, to pay attention to your breathing, to have things in place to prevent that taking control is crucial because when I realize that maybe I'm getting sweaty palms, maybe my breathing's increasing, maybe my heart rate feels like I've just run, and I'm like, hang on a minute, I'm able to clock onto that, so then I can put things in place, such as leave the desk, leave the screen. For me, I've, I've found over the years, me watching trades isn't good for me. If I sit here and watch a trade, I usually will interfere in some way, shape, or form. Therefore, once I'm in, especially the way I trade now, there's no need for me to interfere with a trade. It's a win or it's a loss, simple as that. So all I have to do is take myself away from the trade and whether that's do something else or it's leave, go for a walk, work out, hit the gym, do something around the house, take the dog out, whatever it is, I will do something to stop me staring. If you stare at every single candle forming, you are going to go on an emotional roller coaster because you are putting yourself through pain. You are seeing pullbacks in the market. When you back test, 30 seconds, you just push the bar replay 10 times speed, you've hit TP or you've hit a loss. In live markets, you could sit in trades for hours if not days, depending on how you trade. You can't base every candle pullback on, oh, what's gonna do, oh my God, oh my God. Have a nervous breakdown. Your hairline will end up receding like no tomorrow. The reality of it is, is for what reason? Like you don't need to be like that, but you're holding on to it because it means a lot to you. And I understand trading means a lot to many people watching this. Trading means a lot to me as well, and I fully get that. However, if you're in a situation where trading is just all you have, is your only source of income, and you're relying on this challenge pass or relying on that challenge account to pay for your bills, you're gonna have a much harder time at controlling your emotions because they're gonna be a lot more present as opposed to someone who has an income, has a side hustle, has trading, has a cash buffer, isn't reliant on trading and is treating it more of a passion and more of a long game. That person will be able to sit with their emotions a lot better than someone who's a nervous wreck because if you don't win this trade, you can't pay your bills. Because now you've put all of that on that trade, not just the fact that it's a trade. And you do have to detach from trades, and this is where journaling's great, because in some of the templates I've got for Notion, you'll see I have areas where I ask, how did you feel You know, pre-trade, post-trade, during the trade, how did you feel? But you, it's key to do that at the end, because you'll have a bias before, so do it at the end of the trade and actually be honest with yourself, because that's where you'll start to pick up things that will go, I felt this way, I felt that way. Okay, I can dig into that. Why did I feel emotional? What was causing that? If you can't be self-aware that that's happening, then it will already happen before you realize and by then it's too late, but you're going to lose. And I don't think enough people are still okay with the fact they're gonna lose. The problem is, is you need to be a good loser. That's all that matters is can you lose well? Because what happens when people lose, that's when self-sabotage kicks in. They chase that money back. I only recently had a, a conversation with a friend, I'm not gonna throw him under the bus. I've done the same thing, we've all done it. But he'll take a loss, he took the loss, rather than walk away, he finds a way to make that money back because he doesn't want to take the loss. And that means he's not okay with the losing. And if you're not okay with the losing in trading, you're not gonna get very far because if, you're not, if you can't be a good loser in trading, you're finished because you're gonna lose no matter what you do. You might have some months where you don't lose, but there'll be months where you lose. And again, this comes to your data to actually understand how often do you lose? How many times do you lose across a month? How many times do you lose across a quarter? How many times do you lose a year? How many drawdown months have you had in a year? These are all data things you need to know so that when you experience it live, you can go, oh, it's kind of normal. And if it's not kind of normal, then it's likely not the system, it's you. And it's the person that's in control of the system that matters the most. Because we could all have, 20 people could have the same system. 
Some people might use it differently, but if we all used it the exact same way, the difference would be is people's psychology and mindset would prevent them from using it how someone would use it that's competent and confident. And that's the difference is lack of confidence, lack of competence, lack of data, lack of trust, lack of self-belief, I want to make loads of money, you've likely just come into this with the wrong poor self-imaging, programming, your identity, so many things are wrong. And until you accept that, truly accept the defeat, but then go, okay, what can I do about it? You have to remember, it's not just about effort. Everyone thinks, oh, but I've put loads of effort in. I'm deserving. I've put effort in. Life doesn't judge that on how much effort you've put in. Everyone's working hard. Everyone wants something, but it's about what work are you doing? And if you don't know what to work on because you're not tracking, you're not keeping up with your habits, keeping up with your actions, journaling and understanding yourself on a better level, then how can you know what to improve on in the first place? And that's why to this day, I still see the same people that two, three years ago were looking for a system who are still looking for a system, who are still looking for consistency. You know what? Kudos to them for still going. At what point do they go, maybe it's not the system, maybe it's me. It's not just about wanting something because a lot of us want stuff. Most people here want something, but only some of us get it. And if you look at the ones that get it, they get it because they understand themselves. They do the work that's needed and required of them. If you don't even know what work's required, how the hell can you fix something that you don't even know what it is that's broke? And the easiest way for you to answer this question, right, is look at your results, which hopefully you've tracked, and go, am I where I need to be or want to be? And if your results don't reflect that identity and that vision you have, then you've got a problem. And the only way to fix that, take responsibility, be self-accountable and go, actually, you know what? This dude on YouTube, he's right. I need to dig into this or I'm not doing this thing properly or I haven't spent that many hours on this or I haven't figured that out. I actually haven't been logging my trades. I haven't tested anything. I haven't really got any guidance. I'm trying to fluke it off one YouTube video, whatever it might be. And then you can dig into that and you can fix that. And that's the beauty of it. Every trader I know that's found success and consistency has gone on this journey. You're not told this when you come into trading because we're not, we don't see it. Why? Because our images of trading and the programming we see and saw is completely wrong from what it actually is. So then your brain starts to go, hang on a minute, this wasn't what I signed up to. What are you want about mindset? I need to know a trading plan. And it's why people will get a plan, they'll get a system that works and they will fail to stick to it because they can't control themselves, they can't be patient, they can't be competent to make a decision of is this a good trade or not. And they'll just go into a, a pit of self-pity and they'll just take poor trades, they'll refuse to log them, they'll refuse to accept accountability, they'll, they'll refuse to accept responsibility and they'll blame someone else. And passing the blame is a lot easier than taking it on the chin. But I promise you, when you take it on the chin, when you become open-minded, you stop looking for a blurry lens or through multiple lens and you focus on one lens and your direction, and you put the work in in the areas that need it, you'll start to see monumental growth. And it will be incremental, it'll be very small to begin with, but it will get bigger and bigger and it will compound. And eventually you'll hit those goals and be like, what was the secret? And the secret was all those months and years ago, you did the consistent things that led to that point. It takes time. Correcting your image or your identity isn't something that just happens overnight. It's gonna take a lot of time, a lot of effort, and you have to get real with yourself and you have to be honest. Because if you're lying to yourself, then you can't help yourself. I hope that helps, I hope that clears some things up. If you haven't subscribed, you know what to do. Subscribe to the channel. I'll catch you all in the next one. Have a great week. Peace and love, gang.